as a reminder, just uh, um, the uh, <clears throat> Pocrity said many years ago, let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. And as you navigate any health challenge, it's always recommended that you partner with a medical practitioner that has a similar philosophy of care that you do. And any of the things that we talk about here are for educational purposes, and they uh, could become a, a part of your, your wellness toolbox. And if you uh, decide to participate in any of those things that are suggested that you do your due, dil due diligence before just diving in and, and doing a particular um, particular way of, of uh, um, treating yourself. So keep that in mind as we uh, look at this, uh, always do your due diligence. Uh, again, Thomas Edison said a long time ago, that the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will instruct his patient in the care of the human frame and diet and in the cause and prevention of disease. Uh, <clears throat> he was very forward thinking. And um, unfortunately it seems like the medical paradigm has not um, kept pace with that concept. <clears throat> So we're gonna look at our first one is balsamoriza, arrow leaf balsam root, uh, balsamoriza sagittata. Its leaves are, are rather woolly in nature, um, large, and it typically grows in, in grassland, steppe, uh, and scrubland kinds of areas. It actually happens to be more common in the Pacific Northwest on the east side of the mountains than the west side of the mountains. It's more of a, like it says, a, a grassland, steppe, scrubland kind of a, a plant, but it's also something that, that can be beneficial not only from a, an edibility standpoint, but also from uh, a medicinal standpoint. So it can grow to one to two feet tall, so it can get to be quite a large plant, it's beautiful flowers, and the leaves themselves can be two feet long. <clears throat> Each flower has one stem, it's kind of like a sunflower, it has a taproot that can be up to eight feet deep and lateral roots up to three feet around. So it can have a very sizable tap root and a very deep, deep tap root. From an edibility standpoint, the leaves are edible, either raw or cooked. So the leaves are quite substantial in size. So that's, that's helpful to know. The stems, you would want to peel first. They have exterior that isn't particularly palatable. So the interior portions are, are edible, but the exterior you'd want to peel away. The seeds can be eaten like a sunflower seed, although they're gonna be on the small side as compared to sunflowers. Although they are an Asteraceae family, the same family that sunflowers are in. And the roots uh, can be eaten steamed uh, or like a, like a potato steaming a potato, potato or dried and pounded into a flour. So the roots are actually quite sizable and we'll see some uh, pictures of those as we go along here. <clears throat> So the root here, uh, you can see on the, on the right, is quite um, sizable. That's a fairly good sized um, balsam root there. And on the upper left there as well, you can see a, a picture of the root. <clears throat> and it's broken off because as it mentioned, it can be up to eight feet deep. And often the soil is not particularly conducive to easy digging. Um, so it would be uh, quite common that it would be broken off uh, before you would actually access the entire portion. But it looks like the bulk of it is going to be um, towards the surface and then getting narrower as it gets further down. <clears throat> so that can be dried and pounded into a flour and used either along with other regular flour, or other types of flour, um, to be used in the same way as flour. From a medicinal standpoint, the leaves, stems, and roots are all uh, usable in a medicinal uh, way. Uh, from an internal standpoint, it can function as a disinfectant and as an expectorant. So an expectorant is something that's gonna uh, aid mucus discharge from the body, coughing and releasing it from the lungs and allowing you to expunge it uh, more, more readily and easily. It can function as an immune system booster, <clears throat> the roots, used internally in a tea can help boost the immune system, also functions in an antimicrobial way and activates white blood cells. So the white blood cells, the leukocytes are the, the blood cells in your body that fight infection. And there are several different types of those and it activates uh, them and brings them into more an a more active state to fight pathogens. <clears throat> body aches, uh, sore mouth, uh, toothache, you can chew the root and that can aid in uh, relieving pain from a toothache or sores in the mouth. 
<clears throat> a gentle inhalation of the, of the root smoke can also aid in, in body ache reduction <clears throat> overall. So the Native Americans be, were quite proficient at, at doing that, probably more like an incense than, um, <clears throat> and, than any other way. We saw that it had expectorant properties and that's helpful in, in congestion. So chest congestion, coughs, sore throat, and tuberculosis. The old term for tuberculosis was consumption. And so it can be helpful in that it's a lung, a lung infection. So a tincture of fresh or dried roots uh, can uh, help with uh, sore throat <clears throat> and the release, releasing of phlegm that can build up in the, in the body, in the chest, in the airways. The tincture in water, uh, use that as a, put the tincture into the water and use it as a tea. So the tincture would be a concentrated form and then you can dilute it by putting it into, into water and make it as a, as a tea. <clears throat> you can also use it uh, at a cough syrup way to kind of help with coughs. And again, for throat pain, just like sores in the mouth, you can chew the root and then you can make a tea of the, of the shaved root. So root infusion. We'd want to take probably like a vegetable peel or something like that to uh, get the, the pieces into fine, finer pieces. The more surface area there is, the better uh, infusion you will have from that. So use that, that tea for tuberculosis and for things like, like whooping cough. <clears throat> so a recipe for the cough syrup. <clears throat> Here on the right, you can see some of the root and then also the the cough syrup in a, in a jar there. So three to four tablespoons of the fresh arrow leaf balsam root root and chop them into small pieces. And then with a, a cup of raw honey. So simmer the honey and add the chopped balsam root to that honey. So it's kind of unusual to, to heat up honey, but you're not actually boiling it, just simmering it. Simmer it on low for two to three hours. So you'll strain the warm honey and remove the pieces so essentially what you're making is a decoction from the root in, in honey um, yeah. and place that in a clean jar, uh, date and label it. So honey essentially will, will stay um, without canning indefinitely. So what you're basically doing is you're making an infusion um, into an, and a decoction uh, by extracting into honey instead of into water, the nutritive properties from the balsam root. <clears throat> and then that'll be used as a, as a cough syrup. So that can be used for, again, for tuberculosis and other cough, whooping cough and like. So use one to two teaspoons every two to four hours or as needed. So you can see on the lower right there is a balsam root from the arrow leaf, and it's quite substantial. Again, it can go down to about, looks like a piece of wood right there. It looks like almost like, um, <clears throat> like ponderosa bark, but that's gonna be the underground root stuff uh, that can stretch down to eight feet deep. For skin issues, the balsam root leaf can be used as a compress. So just take those leaves and you can use them either dry or powdered, um, <clears throat> or you can use the, the fresh leaves. Just uh, if they're fresh and in season, mash them, uh, bruise them, and then place that poultice directly on the skin. Uh, or you can infuse it into olive oil and use it as a salve. <clears throat> Uh, so it can help relieve all sorts of skin pain, burns, wounds, rashes, that sort of thing. So it's nice to be able to use it fresh as well as to be able to dry it and use it in the dry form in the off season. So collect it during the summertime, save it aside, dry it and keep that handy for use during the winter time when it's not, uh, the leaves are not green and fresh. <clears throat> Again, an infusion would be done in olive oil, typically in that oil infusion is not a heated infusion, but just a time duration infusion. You would take the fresher dry leaves and put them in a jar, add the olive oil to it, three to four weeks of, of daily rotation would infuse that oil and then uh, strain out the solids and retain the oil with the extracted therapeutic properties from the leaves. <clears throat> So for things like jock itch, athlete's foot, ringworm, and other types of fungal infections, you can use the dried and powdered root. Just apply the powder to the areas of irritation and it functions in an antifungal role. For stomach aches, you can make a, a tea from any or all of the different parts of the plant, um, not the flower, but the root leaves or stems. 
and it can help to soothe the GI and soothe digestion. So it aids, aids in digestive um, actions. So when you're harvesting, again, remember that the, the roots are very deep, can go down to eight feet. Um, <clears throat> so leaves and stems, of course, are fairly easy because they're above ground, uh, but the roots, uh, you're gonna be uh, aided by using a digging tool like one you would see at the, on the right there, the lower right, a digging stick, kind of a nice T-handle with a, a long point on it, a very tough piece of wood that you can uh, force into the ground and around to help extract both the lateral and the tap roots. <clears throat> It may take some significant dirt removal and rock, depending on where uh, your patch of uh, balsam root is actually growing. So it happens to be a fairly slow growing plant or, over time. So just take what you need. Uh, it doesn't need to be harvested in great quantity, um, but uh, it does take some time to, to grow over time to, to get to the size, like to the eight foot depth. So use it judiciously. Our next plant this evening that we'll look at is sage, and salvia officinalis. So sage comes in a, a lot of different varieties and they're all medicinal and they're all edible. And they can have benefits associated both medicinally as well as edible. Can grow up to two feet tall. So again, can be a fairly tall plant. The flowers are lavender colored. They typically are present from the late to spring to summertime. And their leaves are, are kind of fuzzy. They're kind of a, a green soft leaf, very short hairs, kind of have a slightly wrinkled top to them <clears throat> with the veins present. And their, their edibility is primarily as a herb, a pot, not a pot herb, a pot herb would be like something that you would, would um, like anything that's herbaceous does not have a woody stem. So like spinach would be a pot herb that you would put in a pot and then eat. But this is more of a flavoring and a, and a seasoning. <clears throat> For, for food. So that's its primary edible purpose. You wouldn't just make up a, a, a batch of sage to eat on its own, but you use it in, in cooking. So the medicinal properties that you, we find in sage are they're antimicrobial, anti-mutagenic. So say essentially what that does is helps to protect the DNA uh, from mutation, and that's that's a good thing. So there's some some significant beneficial properties in that regard, it's helping to stabilize the DNA from being broken from from toxins and other types of things that that might come in and have a have a um, a mutagenic effect on the DNA. It's antiseptic and antibacterial. So the antibacterial quality uh, plays right in with the antiseptic uh, activity. So it can limit uh, neuropathic pain, essentially uh, pain that you might feel from like a phantom limb. If you had an amputation or lost a limb, the neurons may still for a while project pain into the area where the limb was. Uh, so it can help to limit that. Peripheral neuropathy, essentially uh, nerve damage to the uh, lower extremity, particularly often in conjunction with diabetes. Uh, some cancer pain can be eliminated or limited uh, with the use of sage, as well as carpal tunnel and other uh, sources of pain. Can also help to improve memory, uh, lower uh, blood glucose levels. So taking it in conjunction with uh, carbohydrates <clears throat> on a whole foods plant-based diet that is primarily derived from foraging, one shouldn't have much problem with uh, blood sugar levels going out of, out of control uh, in the sense that those blood sugar levels are typically uh, on a roller coaster when in conjunction with um, refined sugars in, in quantity that is used in the Western world today. If, uh, if you're just foraging, you're not gonna be having those concentrated sugars present at the same way. <clears throat> also menopausal symptoms can be uh, resolved and reduced significantly with the use of sage. So it's a good all around, very versatile herb that can be used for many different things. Uh, we talked about it being a useful seasoning. That's its primary edible use. But one of the roles that it has is aiding the emulsification and digestion of fatty substances. <clears throat> and it stimulates the movement of fat through the gastrointestinal system. So it doesn't just kind of slow down and get sludged in. Um, and also in that regard, uh, prevents, helps to prevent digestion. 
One reason why this is a savory herb that's often used in conjunction with meat, uh, this, the most often place where this is used is a seasoning, sausage and the things like that. Those are very high fatty substances and helps the transit time uh, be less through the, through the GI tract. Meat has a tendency to bind up and constipate as well as have toxins that it harbors and become rancid in the stomach. And the use of sage can help to reduce or uh, eliminate that. Also can function in both men and women as a hormone modulator. So it can help to balance the hormones, promoting normal menstruation and aiding in the menopausal treatment. We mentioned that earlier, hot flashes, night sweats, headaches, uh, mental fog can sometimes come with that. And in men, it can uh, help to treat premature ejaculation of sperm. Sore throats, it's very unpalatable, uh, but can be a very effective treatment. So here's a couple different recipes that can be useful in utilizing sage for a sore throat. <clears throat> so there's a, it's a, a gargle. So one teaspoon of dried sage, one cup of boiling water, uh, a teaspoon of golden seal root powder, five drops of cayenne and a half cup of apple cider vinegar. So the cayenne and the golden seal there, as well as uh, sage in its own right is quite pungent, uh, makes a pretty powerful gargle. So first of all, steep the leaves of the sage for 45 minutes in the, in the water, the boiling water. Then strain and then add the golden seal, cayenne and vinegar. So gargle hourly as long as possible, uh, as long as you can stand it is, is what it is. So it's a pretty potent, uh, rather untasteful experience. And then just uh, discard the gargle uh, solution, spit it out. You're not gonna wanna swallow that or retain it. <clears throat> so some people can't stomach that, not that you're actually swallowing it. It's so bitter that it's not uh, easy to, to utilize for any length of time. So an alternative throat spray that can be made of a similar nature, Take three tablespoons of the dried or fresh sage leaves. So this one uses either fresh or dried. Three quarters of a cup of boiling water, a quarter cup of echinacea extract, and one tablespoon of raw honey. So the honey is going to sweeten it up a little bit there, make it less uh, offensive. Steep those leaves for 30 minutes. Again, a fairly long, kind of a decoction time of extraction rather than a tea. Strain and add the echinacea and honey and then uh, store in a spray bottle. So it has a spray top, a small bottle that would hold that. And then it'll uh, miss the back of your throat when you would spray the back of your throat and just spray it as needed to treat a, a sore throat. <clears throat> wounds. So for slow uh, healing wounds, uh, soak a cotton pad in the infusion. Uh, that is the, the tea and then use a, a compress wrap on it. Helps to relieve pain and it's actually fairly rapid. Uh, fights infection that could come in to a wound and helps to uh, draw in blood to the area. So not to make it bleed more, but just to aid healing. So it promotes healing by promoting uh, the, the blood supply of nutrients to the area. The sage essential oil can actually be beneficial for in, uh, encouraging hair growth. So it improves the circulation of the blood in the scalp and also stimulates the roots, the hair roots. It encourages not only growth, but thick, thickening of hair growth. So it can be used in combination with, with rosemary essential oil. 